apparently this this camera has like four I think four microphones or something it's kind of kind of neat wow this is great this is so great I'm gonna move this over here all right it's me I look like I got a giant head now Slightly choppy. Let me see here. <laughs> My new stream. Then the last one. Okay. What shall we do? What kind of activities shall we have, huh? Hmm? I I wonder if I can make make this camera follow me around. That'd be kind of cool. I don't think this has that capability. Someone join? Yeah, I wonder who it is. I won the sewing list. Actually, let me let me try something here. Delete that one, and I go to YouTube again. So I can share this. I'm gonna get some people to join and say, "Come here, come join us here." Start dancing. <laughs> what am I doing? There we go, that's better. Yeah, I can actually read these comments as they're as they're going, that's kind of cool. But I have um I, I got some black tea here. I I do wanna eventually go get some get some more Navajo tea. I have some tea that's from the mountains. I was picked from the, from the, well, it's herbal tea. It's picked from the hills, likely the either Chusca Mountains or the other side of the Carrizo Mountains in Arizona. Got to get some of those, yeah. Because I I still have I still have some here, with me, but I didn't bring it um, down here to this little little meeting room. The lounge area <laughs> but I the other thing I do want to try though is I want to come here and I like I want to give some some lectures on this board you see this board so I have some writing on it and I think it would be nice to be able to focus the camera directly onto where I'm trying to write I mean I don't know if it's I don't know if it's clear enough. Probably not. Let me see. I can control it here on my phone. My phone is is able to control what's on the screen. So let me try that. And supposedly this is this is in like 4K resolution or something. Oh, let me check the. Uh, hold on. Let me check the the battery level on this thing because this 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 camera has got a touch screen right here. Let me check. Uh, Never mind. I don't want to log it over. Let me try. Let me try uh, on here. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh -huh. Ooh. right here we are in business yeah you know oh check that out the the, uh, the clear oh wow <laughs> this is clearer than I expected it to be I, I really wish oh okay never mind. I see the boundary percentage 74 percent one okay let me try something I'm going to write 
something here on the board. Oh, yeah, this is something my uh, friend wrote. linguistics and then talking about some of the things that I knew from the mountains like uh, here, here's one thing I'll let you I'll let you in on about the Navajo language it said every time you use the letter A that actually I want to say the Navajo vocabulary The, the list that Ashi is as well, this is also spelled like, hold on, give me a second. This is also spelled like this, Nava Joe. But the thing I want to point out about right here is that this is pronounced like it's D, V, H. So this is equivalent to an actual J. I made a weird, I made a weird uh, arrow somewhere here, but it's equivalent to a J in English. English J. So English J, 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 right? Like jive. I speak jive. So, I you don't, but J. J, Joe. So people mispronounce it as Joe. Nava Joe, which is incorrect. We don't call ourselves Nava Joe. We call ourselves Navajo, which is roughly equivalent to Nava. Something like that. And then this is also equivalent to what we call ourselves Nen. <laughs> there you go. So that's Navajo for you. This is this is a very common spelling right here with the J, but people people uh, mispronounce this. It's wrong. J. And then this J is supposed to make make an H sound, right? But in reality, in the Navajo language, you can see here there's a bit of evidence. Maybe I should use a different color. I'll use purple, how about that? Here's some evidence, look at, look at this. So here's a H in Navajo. When we say H, ha, it actually is an H. So it's equivalent to an H in English. H sound in English, ho. So every every letter in the Navajo or the every every Latin letter in the Navajo alphabet that we're borrowing, the H is actually supposed to sound like an H. You see? And when we write a J, a J is supposed to sound like a J. But Particular spelling, exclusively this spelling of the word Navajo, the J is equal to a, an H. Only that word. That word only. So what this means is that when we write something like Jo, Kana A. Like this. So, oh, whoops. <laughs> you'll see that J is the same as the J sound, which is the same as BZH. The English version of J. So, you see, J, J in English. And then J, you spell it out phonetically. And then the, uh, you see a letter H right here. It's also an H sound in English. Voila. 
We don't say Yohana'e, the word Yohana'e does not exist in Navajo. It's, it's, so in other words, it's not equivalent to the Y sound. It does not exist. Zilch. Voila. So this is something I want to make very clear about the Navajo language. It goes kind of a different direction. But you can also ask a question where, oh, I just realized you can't see anything, can you? <laughs> no, you can't see anything. No, hold on, let me let me readjust this. So that maybe you can see. Oh, look at that. Now you can kind of see. Let me move the camera a little closer. How about that? Make, make things a thousand times easier. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Current bitrate of the speed, it says. Kind of see, you can kind of see the letters. Okay, zoom in a little bit more. Three sixty degree camera. Yeah, we, I zoom it should be working now. So, as I was saying, I wrote here Navajo language. We we have this J J uh, letter J here, and when we use a J in Navajo, it's supposed to be relatively e equal to the English were equivalent. And then, uh, I said English, yeah. So, the J makes a J, and the H makes an H in Navajo. And then, the, the J sometimes makes an H, but when I say sometimes, I, I, I mean exclusively only right here. It's the only place you use the, use the, a J to make a huh sound. But the Navajo language does not, however, use the J to make a yo, a Y sound. Or we don't say yohana a. Eh? So what does this word mean? Let me choose a different let me choose a different color. A blue, I use blue. So Johanna A, eh? this is the sun. Let me draw a sun for you. Let me use uh, blue. And a blue smile. You ready for this? And then I'm going to draw a nice little circle. Not a perfect circle. Some line. Voila. What is Johan? in Navajo is the sun in the sky. So if we say Johanna A or we say something like Johanna A Nahalin. Alright, here's the word for it. Here's another word for it.
Yeah. You can say it means it is like um, it appears to be or is like in English or appears to be. So this is your Navajo lesson for today. I just have a couple more words for you. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll give you one more short lesson on the Navajo language. And here it is. In the Navajo language, we also say Aksizolin. A H D O L I. And you'll notice here that there's a little uh, little mark, sort of a, a, a short glottal stop that exists before the letter A. So you'll notice extensively that in the Navajo language, the, the glossary or the list of words that start with the letter A is extensive. So if you were to like take all the percentage of, of the Navajo language around a circle, and split it up into like multiple parts. Like this. Then you could say that the letter A probably takes up like uh, actually let me split it up here. Let's say letter A is exclusively right here. <laughs> All the words that start with letter A in Navajo language, right here. And then the other letter that takes up a big chunk is letter N. And then all the others they, they fill in right here. So letter A and letter N, these two take up the most, I would say that they take up the most space <laughs> in the Navajo vocabulary. And there's no specific percentage, but it's quite, quite large, as you can see here, I drew it visually. But all I'm saying is, you say something in Navajo, and this just means light or lightweight. There, there's also another spelling, which is like, And there actually is some parallelisms here because you just say you can also just say light, as in something lightweight. But you also have over here the sun. or And as I, as I said, the letter A typically has that short level stop, that little mark in front of it. You can look at Navajo that's been written by Navajo linguists, Navajo uh, language experts. And you'll see that I didn't mean, and all the other Navajo words that start with the letter A, they, they all have this mark in the front. So if you see someone that doesn't use a mark in the front, Probably because they just want to spell something quickly. I didn't mean to shine. Really shiny, then you say, Ayo. This is like you're adding emphasis. It's a lot of. Or should I say extensively? Extensive. <laughs> Extensive shine. This almost sounds like a. Like I'm advertising something. Get an extensive shine for your shoes. Okay, are you in Nahalin? 
very shiny. It's kind of as if. NRL. What is NRL? National Rugby. Hold up. Someone's talking about uh, National Rugby. <laughs> So, you have learned today what a range of different Navajo words means. And then I will go here. All the parts. Oh, oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. So I might I might misspell things slightly here there, so it's fine because Navajo language is primarily spoken. The way we spell it, the way we see it, or the way we sound it out, it's phonetic. So when you see a word and it doesn't quite match the actual sound of the word, like the the vocal pronunciation, then well, something might have happened there where some, some mistakes were adopted. But in general, it's supposed to be phonetic, meaning every section of the word should more or less be able to would be like uh, so that's the Cyrillic version <laughs> which is kind of funny and then let's see uh, Jonah 8 and Cyrillic would probably be like So this would be like going on eight or something like this. So the the Cyrillic version of of this word here is, is is written like this. So you could, if you know how to read Cyrillic, if you, if you know how to read and write in uh, Russian or maybe uh, Ukrainian or some other Slavic language, that is. Cyrillic alphabet system, you could try to read this and then you'll make more or less the same sound as this word here, which is the same word for uh, sun. You probably can see I draw sun here, hopefully you can see it on camera. So, let me check it out. Um, it's written there. Some parts of this thing seem like it's too, too bright. Yeah. Like it. So this is the 1 a.m. lecture.
<laughs> and then I'll type in Navajo. Navajo. Oh yes. And I must add once more that in Navajo, I, I believe because let's say let's say this is the Navajo Nation. It's more or less shaped something like this. Okay, maybe more. It's more or less shaped like this, and then like Arizona here. New Mexico here, uh, Colorado, Utah. So it's it's more or less shaped like this, and then there's like a small part here, I think, because we we recently, as a nation, uh, purchased. We have, can you believe this? We are we are Native Americans, right? We're indigenous, and we have to buy back the land. <laughs> from the United States, right? <laughs> Which is kind of ironic. Like this territory belongs to us, but in, on the Navajo tribe, we we wanted to extend the the uh, the tribe out this way. This might go this way a little bit. So I'm gonna it's more the Navajo Nation is more or less shaped like this. Not as shape. And then. Some a couple of years ago, very recently, the the tribe decided to buy a chunk of land in Colorado. We didn't own any part of the state of Colorado, but there's a small part of it that's that was purchased, and that's <laughs> that's what I think is funny is because <laughs> we're buying back land from a, a country that already technically belongs to us, which is fun. Or a land on a nation that technically belongs to us. <laughs> uh, anyway, etc. I was saying that down here, th this this map is that down here on the south uh, on the south side, here's the north side, here's the east, and then the west. There's like four mountains. Anyways, down south, down here in this region, there's a little place here called uh, Window Rock. W R. Let's just say WR for short. Window Rock is the capital of the Navajo Nation. And that's where our central government lies. Of course, blotched throughout throughout the entire Navajo Nation, we have many different chapters. The chapters are like local government that we established ourselves. And my, my chapter is called Red Valley Chapter. The Hazakana, what they call. It. <laughs> anyway, it's in this it's in this region, the corner of the corner of the upper right corner of Arizona. So that's where I'm from. But anyway, uh, down here, way down south, there's a place called Window Rock. Actually, yeah, it's not on New Mexico side. It's too wrong. Uh, Window Rock is more like somewhere right here. This is Window Rock. Window Rock, Arizona. And um, down here, you know, if you if you go slightly back in in American history, you know, let let's just let's just pretend this is a big map, right? And here's Arizona, and so all these uh, four states. So these four states did not exist at one point. The United States did not exist at one point. The United States is barely like a little little over two hundred. 200 something years old. It's not that it's, it's not that uh, old of a country. It's, it's, it's barely a couple of generations. <laughs> but in this region, there was this place down here called Mexico, right? I mean, that's why we have New Mexico here, New Mexico State. But down here, there were tribes, there were people who lived there, and then there were the Spaniards who came from Spain, and I, they did, I don't know, some campaign thing down here and then that's how people from uh, generally south of this region they all kind of speak some variant of 
Spanish, what I call Spanish, <laughs> which is technically Spanish, but because it's from Spain, I call it Spanish. I don't know any Spanish. <laughs> anyway, down here, these people, for them, we did some business with them. We had some small conflicts with them as well. Every now and then, these Spaniards, these Spain people, European, long time ago. And they had some influence, I believe, on this particular spelling of Navajo. So us, the net, the net people, when we spell Navajo, it's supposed to be with H because H is H. But the J, as I mentioned earlier, that, that we don't use currently uh, for, for pronunciation of the, the H sound, the H sound has been replaced here. And that comes from this imp sound. So these people that speak Spanish, these Spanish speaking people down here, right? They, I guess, there's some, some slight influence on the southern area of Navajo's uh, language. So, Navajo, the Navajo Nation is a big place, huge place, right? We have mountains, and a mountains here, mountains up here, there's some mountains up here, and then you get to like Flagstaff. Maybe you're familiar with a place called Flagstaff, so that, is, that, so that exists somewhere over here. And then like Grand Canyon, somewhere like But all these mountain regions and, and, and places where it, it really s divides, it creates dialects, of the Navajo language. So the Navajo language in itself does have dialects. So dialects. dialects do exist in Navajo. We don't have names for any specific dialect because generally people just communicate with each other and we understand each other, so that's good enough. There's no need to label any specific dialect. But we do have dialects. Why? Because I drew we have mountains, and these mountains, they're like, like where I'm from, for example, is above 3,000 meters. 3,000 meters above sea level. So that's like uh, close, I would say, close to 10,000 feet. Almost 10,000 feet. Maybe about 10K. 10K feet. Uh, So that's that's how high the mountain is, rather. And when you go to the other side of the mountains, where I live, people speak Navajo slightly differently on that side compared to the northern side where I'm from. So, like for example, uh, just one small example: the the word for snow in Navajo, snow. Uh, where I live, we say yes. Yes, it's snow is coming, winter time. And then on the other side of the mountain range or like other places, people uh, use the word, uh, let's see, they spell with a Z. So there is definitely some dialects in the way people speak. And also down here as well. When people say the word uh, So, let me see, maybe I can erase some of these words here. Everything. I love. So, this, in this region here, or in some other region, people say set. Set means uh, rock, in Navajo, but they say chill. It's like chill. You say the two words together, this this is like a, maybe a bush or a plant. Or a tree. Or some plant. So when you say rock plant or rock bush, whatever you whatever you call it, you, you put those two together and it becomes the word oak. You know, because as as you might notice, oak, the word, the wood, oak or oak trees, 
they are uh, really solid wood. It's kind of like a rock. It's a very hard wood. <laughs> it's a hard, hard wood. Oh, and so that's how we end up with the word such il. But that that's how we say actually I should point out this that's how we say it where I'm from in this region, such il. Um, but for some reason there are people in this region they 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 pronounce a little bit differently. They don't say such il, they say ch chill. Or it's ch I don't know if it's checho or chechu. It's probably probably like this. They pronounce it like this. And you can see here there's there's no word for ch. Ch does not exist in the Navajo language. But the word se does exist and it means rock. So there's some loose loose mispronunciation here, and if you speak to some Navajo elders, they will acknowledge that. You can ask some Navajo language experts. They will say, oh yes, that's, that's right. The, it's, it is mispronounced ever so slightly, but people just kind of stuck with it because language changes over time. But this is uh, more or less the same. Now you know, there is some uh, language changes, and also Navajo, Navajo. <laughs> some people pronounce it Navajo. Mistakenly, it's a mistake. It's supposed to be Navajo, but pe well, people just prefer the spelling anyway. I don't. I prefer spelling with an H or just using the net. If you if you're not sure on your stance of this of spelling Navajo a certain way, just spell it with the net. There's there's no mistake here. You can't you can't go wrong. It's foolproof. <laughs> the spelling of the net is foolproof. It's, it's not. So. Okay, that concludes today's lesson on the Navajo language. Thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you learned something today about Navajo, about my indigenous language. And I uh, just want to put this here. I'm going to make some more, I'm going to make some more lecture content in the future. And uh, right now I'm just experimenting with how this would go on this little whiteboard here. Yeah. Let me just zoom into this a little bit. It doesn't seem like I'm racing everything at once. Moving around a lot. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure this is on the right spot. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in today. Just wanted to share some knowledge and experience. How linguistics goes. We'll talk some more about Navajo in the future. But until next time, stay safe and happy and lazy. Just kidding. That's what Styro Pyro says. <laughs> All right. Well, see you guys. Take care out there. And let me let me let me switch the camera over.